Hi, everybody. I am Alicia Dubois, and I'm going to start the. Oh, except that. Can you make me a presenter? <laughs> or can you allow me to share my screen? Because I'm a host, but I'm not able to share. Thank you. Okay. All right. Notes up here. Uh, so we're going to talk about exhibit pages and how to create them. Okay. These are the things that we're going to go over. These are things that are different from the video that I've already posted. And if you haven't watched that already, it's okay. There's a link to it in the exhibit, exhibitor area. And it's on YouTube. And I can post the link again. Uh, but I basically did a sample exhibit with a test user that is about an hour long, <laughs> and I'm sorry I sped up the, the boring bits, but um, it w is a video of me basically going through the process of putting in a project that I had done a while ago and um, making it into an exhibit page. And that kind of covers a lot of, of basic stuff, um, but today I want to go into a little bit more detail uh, about a few things. So. Just bring up my presenter view. There we go. Okay, so organizing your work. Um, I highly recommend you make an outline. Uh, that was like my least favorite thing about fifth grade, but it is a skill that has probably stuck with me the longest. Um, making an outline will help you identify your headings, and your headings are really important for other people to read your work and navigate your work, um, and also to kind of break things up and we'll talk about layout uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit later in a couple minutes. Um, and then I want to talk about topic choice a little bit. Um, Athenaeum, the event Athenaeum is very, it has a very broad and inclusive brief. We can bring a body of work, we can bring a one particular project. We can bring a project that is in progress. We can bring uh, five projects that are in progress. It, it has a, such a broad um, spectrum of, of possibilities that it is sometimes really hard to narrow it down. For this particular event that we're doing online, you get one page, one exhibit page. So therefore, I would recommend that you focus on one area of interest or one subject. Uh, so if you're going to include multiple projects, maybe you would include multiple projects within the same um, field of interest, like multiple fiber projects or multiple costuming projects. If you wanted to show steps of a process, that's also a great way to go on a page like this. And you can take people through a logical progression um, of how what you've done so far. And again, the work doesn't have to be finished. The um, main thing though, the important thing, is to lead your reader through the article in a logical way. Okay, we wanna talk, let's talk a little bit about layout. Um, I'm going to share a different window here. Um, One moment. First. Ah, look. Maybe. Yes. Okay. So this is the. Oh, am I sharing this? Yes, you are sharing it. Okay, okay. It's hard to see what you're seeing that I'm seeing. Okay. That's <laughs> so, totally uh, fair. <laughs> this is the exhibitor homepage. So when you when you first log in, this is where it brings you. And uh, this is that that uh, YouTube video, the really long one that I mentioned before. Um, and this is how you get to your your editing space. So you can either go up here, or there's a link here, or a link over here. Um, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you the 
test exhibit that I did. So this is the one I did in the video. Um, so by page layout, I mean that you have one page and you want to, and you really only have uh, sort of three quarters of the page. So you want to break up the information as best you can with headings and images uh, or sound bites, sound clips. You don't want, you want to avoid big long stretches of text. So you can see here that I, I really leaned heavily on my outline. And this little table of contents lets the reader jump down into the different sections. This appears automatically once you have, uh, I think it's three headings. So this will be a great way for people to navigate through your project. Um, but you really wanna make sure that you're breaking up the text with things like images or, um, know, things of interest to look at that are not just big long stretches of text. People are much more likely to read a paragraph or so at a time. It's, it's a psychological thing. And you want to be consistent with the levels that you use for your headings because they will, um, they'll come out the right size on the page, but then it'll also make this table of contents much more logical for your viewers. Okay. okay, embedding. One of the things that I didn't go over while I was making the um, test exhibit page here was how to embed files or video or something like that in your page. So I'm gonna go back to the edit view here so you can see what this looks like behind the scenes. And um, let's say that I wanted to attach maybe my um, documentation to this. So if that's a Word document and um, if you haven't played around with this yet or haven't watched the video, I'll tell you that anywhere there's a little plus sign like this, it means you can add another piece of, piece of content or a block. And this will pop up with all the different blocks that you can choose. So under this embeds title, you can see that there are a lot of different choices for things that you can embed. Um, please don't use Kickstarter. The one that I, oh, so so if you wanted to, to do like a YouTube video or, or um, Spotify and Instagram photo album, that kind of thing, uh, you can you can use that. The one that I want to do though is a file. There we go. And you can also search for it here if you, if you don't want to browse through and try and find it. And it says upload a file or pick one from your media library and the um, I, either of these will actually bring you to the media library interface, but let's say upload. And ooh, now I have to remember where this documentation is. I had everything all planned out. Can you see all my files here? Yeah, well, there it is. Okay, so I chose it and I can um, set the settings over here, like link to a URL or and open it in a new tab. I want to, I want to have it download. Oh, and it automatically put in the name of the document, so that's nice. If I preview that, I want to test to make sure that the download works, because what if it just shows the location on my hard drive to link to it? Let's skip all the way to the bottom. Oh, 
oh yeah, no, I took it from athenaeum.baronyofmadrona.net, so that's great. Uh, I know that somebody's going to ask me, what types of files can I upload or download? That is a very good question that I have not found the answer to. I uh, would say that definitely Word documents and PDF files and Excel files, uh, images, stuff like that. I don't know if it would let you do anything that is not a document formula or document format. How are we doing? Is everybody still doing okay? Yeah, so far so good. Great. Okay. Uh, what's next? I totally muted you for a second. Um, do you know the <laughs> file size limitation per file and the total of files that you can use? You can use many files, as many files as you want if you wanted to. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that you use, you know, make your exhibit all files, but because you're asking people to, you know, follow, follow a link. But <clears throat> if you, um, you can put multiple files in here and the upload limit, I think it's just the same as, you know, it's, as the um, media library. So how big was this? This was six megabytes. Oh, maximum upload file size, eight megabytes. If your uh, documentation is super huge and it won't go up there, uh, I don't know, send me a message, we'll work it out. It looked like that said it was an eight, eight meg limit, is that correct? Yes, eight megabyte limit. So uh, I'm actually going to leave that there. So I'll just save this as a draft. Because I'm not ready to publish it yet. And then go back to the presentation. Am I doing it? Do you see the screen that says embedding? Yep. Sweet. Oh, no, I think I see that it has a little border around it. Okay. Images. Let's talk about images. I've had a lot of questions about images. Um, so, well, I should have just kept sharing. We, there are a couple things to talk about with images. So the concept of pixels, resolution, and size versus quality. Um, Okay, so are people familiar with any of these terms? Pixels, resolution, size versus size and quality. We have several yeses. Okay, all right. Um, I don't wanna go into too much detail, but I have had a lot of questions about this. So pixels are, uh, tiny squares that make up a picture on a digital image. They are, a pixel is the smallest square that you can see. So um, you have to zoom in really far, or if you're playing Minecraft, you know what pixels look like. The um, resolution is kind of the, um, how do they define it? It's, it's the, it's how, many pixels there are per inch of photo. So by adjusting the number of pixels per inch and the number of pixels wide, and it gets very confusing because the same term gets used twice. So um, if a pixel is one square, and then you think of that one square as a, um, you know, as a single color that makes up the image. The resolution is how deep, how many of those pixels fit into one inch. So the more pixels you fit into one inch, the more detailed an image, a shape you're going to be able to get. So um, I actually put a link on the computer side 
finding exhibitor page to um, show you the difference. This is a, an article about the, um, the difference. So, um, let's see. so this, these are pixels here, and this, this is a very zoomed in view. Um, but the number of pixels per inch is going to, is, is the density, and that's going to give you a much more detailed view. So this article explains it and also shows you how to adjust your images. Um, but I'm going to show you an actual example because, okay, this was an image that I got a question about morning and it is let's see. okay so it is 5,184 pixels wide by 3,456 pixels high and the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. 72 pixels per inch is a good size for the web. If you're trying to print something you want it to be at about 300 pixels per inch but for the web they say 72 is good. Uh, if you're looking at it on a um, smartphone that has like a, a high resolution screen, 144 is even better, which is just double 72. Okay, so when I changed the resolution here, the pixels per inch, these numbers changed uh, because it scaled the image for me based on the proportions that were already there when I opened the image. But this is way too big. So to give you an idea, the image that goes across the top of the page, the exhibit page, is 1,300 pixels wide. And this is 10,000 pixels wide. So this is really big. And the, the size now is 205 megabytes. And our upload limit is eight. So we need to bring the size of this down. To fit all the way across the page, like I said, 1,300. So if I change the width to 1,300, and this little um, lock means to lock the proportion of the height and width of the image, I get it down to 3.22 megabytes. And that's gonna look nice and clear and it will scale very well on the, on the page. And this would be the full width of the page and you only get 70% for your exhibit. So this is, this is more than big enough. But um, if we wanted to make it a little bit smaller, to like be the full width of the of that seventy percent of the page, um, what would it be? I would have to do math. Okay, it would be nine ten. So if I make this nine hundred and ten pixels wide. Now it's down to 1.58 megabytes. So I'm going to say OK. And it shrunk way down because look, I'm only looking at it at 16.7%. So if I zoom in up to 100%, that's how big it looks on my screen. And it still looks really great. So then um, I, I would just save this. And I'm just going to save it as a quick export and then it will upload no problem. Um, the tool that I'm using here is Photoshop. It is not a tool that I expect everybody to have. You can use a lot of different image editing software programs to do this. And if you just can't, then I am happy to help you. So get in touch with me and, and we can you, make your images look nice. Do you know if there are any image types that aren't usable? Um, somebody asked about TIFFs. Oh, TIFFs are, um, okay, that's a really good question. So there are a bunch of different image formats. The ones that are most commonly used on websites are uh, JPEGs, JPE, G or JPG extension file extensions or PNG files. 
And the, so TIFF files are really high resolution images. You, um, I think, I'm not sure if it will let you upload them or not, uh, but they are going to be really, really big. So when you, um, when you're thinking about image formats to use for this project, the, or when you're thinking about scaling images, the two types that I just mentioned, JPEG and PNG have a couple of really big differences. They are both good for formats for photos, which have a lot of color variation, like this one does. Um, but a JPEG file will lose a little bit of quality when you save it and every time you save it. So if you don't want to lose any quality, you want to use PNG file extension. And that's the one that I use most often. Um, there's a third kind, which is GIF, or some people say GIF, it's G-I-F file extension. And that is best really for um, very simple line art type, you know, two colors, three colors, something like that. Um, and, and I don't know that anybody will have anything relevant for this project. So you, if you have a TIFF image, I would highly recommend that you look at the, the size of it, the resolution of it, and um, export it, save it as a different format, like PNG. And that'll still preserve the high quality that you got with that original image, but um, make the file size a lot smaller. Um, somebody also said that they uh, WordPress won't let you load a TIFF. Ah, OK. I did limit the file types that can be uploaded, and TIFF might not have been on the list. So thank you for finding that out. Do we have more questions about images? Uh, somebody asked if there are any good uh, um, image programs, and uh, somebody else actually suggested um, GIMP as a, a freeware version of Photoshop. Yeah, the GIMP is great. Um, that's an open source project that's been going for a really long time, and I used it for a really long time. If you if you have used Photoshop before, the GIMP is re a really comparable program and 100% um, less cost because it is free. The uh, key bindings are a little bit different, so if you're used to uh, using the keyboard to navigate around Photoshop, you can you can get yourself into trouble with the GIMP, but um, that's probably just a me problem. The GIMP is great. Highly recommend. Um, will Microsoft Paint do this? Mm, I don't think so. I don't, I always get frustrated with the, the Windows default image editor and give up on it. I'm, I'm not sure if it will do that. I have trouble enough resizing my images in there. Let, let like just setting the height and width, let alone setting the density, the resolution. But like I said, if you're having trouble and and you just like want to throw in the towel, get in touch with me and I'll just convert all your images and get you back on your way. I don't want to. I don't want this to be a hangout for anybody. So you're kind of the ultimate free program for editing photos then? Well, I mean, I'd like you to try it yourself, <laughs> but because uh, if I did everybody's images, that would be a lot. But but yeah, if, if you're having trouble or, um, you know, you just you just can't get it done and, and you need help, just let me know. Okay, let's see what else we've got. No, oh, no. Somebody, uh, somebody just asked on the topic of images in our presentation, if I have a very not picture friendly project, would you suggest using unrelated images just to break up the text? Um, oh, that's a really good question. So my next slide is questions. 
So I am not even going to go back to that. I'll just come back to you. Uh, so if you have a really text heavy or non image friendly exhibit, what should you do? Um, that's a good question. I feel like I want to know the topic. What would not be used? What would not be image friendly? Could somebody give me an idea? Like it doesn't have to be your actual topic. Writing. Um, I would look for some images on Wikipedia or singing. Okay. Um, yeah, I would look. So, so I might look on Wikipedia or um, do a Google search for public domain images uh, and look for images of like someone writing or um, pictures of you know, um, pot of ink or uh, I, I would look for something that's related to your text. Um, if, if your topic is singing, you could look for images of, I mean, ideally a picture of you singing or video of you singing. The, um, and like an alternative to that would be maybe some sheet music, some period music or some, some music that relates to your piece. Um, I, I would still try to find images. Even if they're not of your project or of you doing your thing. So something, because, so just something related. Something related. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially because we've got that featured image, um, which goes across the top of the page. And, and I talked about it in the video, the featured image is important because it is what people will see when they see your project listed in the exhibits page. So um, just like the helpful articles section of the Road to Athenaeum website, the uh, the featured image, <coughs> excuse me, is what shows up above the title of your um, exhibit, and the the picture will draw is meant to draw people in to want to read your your article. So would you, for, uh, for periods, uh, oh, hang on, I'm, okay. I'm having to catch up. Okay, uh, would you suggest laying this out something like a magazine article in terms of image to text ratio, picking vibrant images, et cetera? Yes, absolutely. That will make your, that will break up your text really well. And, and it will, um, it will really draw the, the reader's eye around the text. Um, so to clarify for somebody, we get one exhibit on one or many topics, correct? Yes. Yes. So if you're putting multiple topics on the same page, because we still only get one page. If you're putting multiple topics on one page, then you want to use kind of a different way to break it up. You can either use your headings or you can use those separator lines like are in the default text that I, I started you off with in, in your exhibit pages. It is, that's a way to sort of separate sections. You could also use an image in the sort of size and shape of the featured image to give it a, a nice wide uh, header image, I guess, to, to start that section, but yeah. And yeah, if anybody, so we're going to review all the pages once you're ready to publish them. And if there's anything that you want us to look at in particular, uh, you can either leave us a note in the text or you can um, send us a message through the exhibitor feedback. And if you want tips about how to break things up more or, you know, if you broke them up enough or anything like that, then I'm happy to give feedback.
Yeah, I like that. Uh, Baron Islan says, think of it as making something you could present to a class of middle schoolers. What can you do to make it visually appealing and keep their interest through the articles? Yes, yes, that's very good advice. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> she says, keep middle schooler interest. Oh, how long will the event exhibit stay up after the event? That's a great question. Um, I can see the chat now. So um, the exhibit will stay up as long as you let us keep it up. So one of the things that we need from you before we can publish is the publisher article to the public is the release forms. And one of the release forms is for the content of your article and one is for the photos in your article. And it's, don't even get me started. I need both of them just to make sure, but um, I wish that the article one just covered it. The, the uh, release for the article says, and there's some guidance in, the, in that page about what to fill in if you want different choices, but the, if you want to allow us to exhibit your page just for the duration of the event, um, we ask that you allow us to keep it up until the end of July so that people who can't make it to, to look through things on the 18th still have a little bit of time to look at things. But we're actually hoping to create an archive of projects that people next year, even when the event is back in person, fingers crossed, uh, that, that people next year can look at as an example. And then um, even after next year's uh, event happens in person, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some of those exhibitors to write their projects up in a similar way and keep them in the archive. So with how long it stays up depends on you. That's your choice and that'll be reflected in the release form that you give us. So either for the duration of this event this year or um, until you ask us to take it down. And if you, if you ask us to, or if you allow us to keep it up uh, longer through next year, for example, you retain access to it. So if you wanna update it again or um, uh, log in and change something about it, change photos, change file downloads, whatever, whatever it is, um, then you you will still have access to that. If you ask us to only keep it up for a certain amount of time, uh, when that time has finished, we will um, delete the page and your account. So. I missed it when you uploaded the document. The picture discussion made me wonder if we can upload PDF documents. Yes. You can update or you can upload PDF documents. You just have to use that file block. And the file block accepts multiple types of files. PDF is definitely one of them. Uh, Word doc also just worked. I'm sure Excel will work. I'm not sure the full range. I tried to research what the full range of documents it accepts is, uh, but I, I couldn't find that information before we even started. So I'll try to I'll try to work on that. Crystal, could you write that down? I mean, Ms. Fry Countess Curie, could you please write that down for me? <laughs> Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Is there anything else that you'd like me to demonstrate or show you? Have people logged in yet and tried to get their get their things uploaded or um, get any text in there? Yeah, the deadline to get the page created. So, so you have un until when you received your account until midnight on the thirteenth. Midnight on the on Monday the thirteenth, so like Sunday night the twelfth. So you basically have a little over three weeks to be done, and then uh, editing will close. 
temporarily and we will review the, all of the exhibits and review all of the conference requests and get all of those things matched up. If your exhibit isn't done by then, then um, it just won't go live. Um, and and the, so the people who have signed up to uh, try and have conferences with people who are exhibiting will be, I mean, they're, they're going to be encouraged as soon as we have people finishing their pages, but they will be strongly encouraged. Um, we, will, we will really remind them a lot uh, starting Monday the 13th, Monday morning and, and Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, so that we have a little bit of time Wednesday evening and Thursday uh, to match people's schedules up. And then you'll receive your schedule on Friday the 17th. So you can be ready for Saturday the 18th. I see the question, embedding videos, does it work the same way as files? Almost. So I will show you that again. Let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah, if you want to share a file, you use this file block. But if you want to share something like a YouTube video or a Spotify clip or SoundCloud, something like that, uh, then you would use this section called embeds. So um, maybe I have a YouTube video. So I would go to that YouTube page and copy the, the share URL and paste it here and hit embed. And then it would, it would show you a preview of that YouTube video with a play button on it, just like it shows you in the in the page here. So that's an example of an embedded YouTube video. And you can do that with other media files. So if it's, if it's a file like a YouTube link or Spotify or something like that from another website, then you want to use the embed. If it is a, um, uh, like a PDF or, or some kind of document, then you want to use the file. If, you're, if your file is not covered by these embed options, um, you know, say you just have like a, a sound file, like an MP4 or something like that, that you haven't shared anywhere, it's just you want to upload it to the, to the website, then um, use the file. And if it doesn't work, let me know, because I'm not sure I might have to enable that file type. But yeah, hopefully. So um, somebody yes. asked, uh, I have a couple of questions. So um, sure. can we request the event team uh, to not allow a specific participant to, uh, to talk with us during the event? Absolutely. If you have a preference for people that you would rather not talk to, um, that will be something that, um, like you could actually just send that to us in a feedback form um, now, or you can, um, uh, when you get your schedule, you can, uh, you can tell us, you know, I would rather not meet with that person and we will fix it. And we are not gonna go back to that person and say, this person doesn't wanna speak to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll say something like, you know, we'll, we'll be very diplomatic about it. Right, Countess Curie, what would we say? So the other question uh, was, do you need to be in, in garb for a conference? Oh, um, okay, need is a strong word. Uh, would we like you to be in garb? Yes, very much. Because it, it adds to the ambiance of the event. It adds to the the feeling that we are at an event. So ideally, yes. Um, from personal experience, uh, you could turn on your video camera and see just how much of you is visible. 
can only put on garb for that part of you. I didn't do that today at all. <laughs> yeah, they were overbooked. We can't find a schedule where the two of your schedules match up. We can't find a, a slot where the two of your schedules match up, something like that. We, we would not say this person doesn't want to talk to you. But yes, if there is someone that you would rather not have a conversation with, um, or even if there's somebody that you specifically would like to have a conversation with, let us know and we, we'll, try, we'll try to set that up. We can't, we, you know, we can't promise, but we can try. Um, somebody yeah. just brought up backgrounds. So, yeah. you know, um, do, do you want to kind of talk about that a little bit or? Sure, sure. Um, so I have a virtual background on my account right now. It's the Bodleian Library, in case anybody is wondering. That's not uh, your home? <laughs> I'm really well, disappointed. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I um, I had occasion yesterday to uh, uh, have to have have to not have a background on and I um, so I really had to clean up my space so you can see I have a very tidy background now um, although it is kind of busy <laughs> um, but so in the um, Zoom tutorials that we're going to be doing next week and the week after, we're actually going to talk about backgrounds and how to uh, set a background in your in your Zoom account, how to set up a background in your in the space where your computer is. If you aren't able to do a virtual background like this, um, some people's computers do them. Some people's computers don't. So. Um, yeah, so we will cover those in the Athenaeum Zoom trainings that are coming up in the next two weeks. Do we have any more questions? Oh, I have a paid Zoom account. Does that make a difference with presentation? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. I mean, Ms. Tristisa, do you know any reason why it would? Um, no, you're going to be basically uh, how we're going to set things up is we're going to have um, breakout rooms. I'm, I'm going to host a meeting and then we're going to have breakout rooms and those breakout rooms are going to be where you're going to have your one on ones. You're not going to have individual uh, meetings for them. So, uh, so having a paid zoom account isn't going to make a difference. You can be just a, a you know, a um, uh, participant of the meeting in order to have the one-on-ones. Does that, does that answer your question, Melissa? When you're in your one-on-one -on -one meeting, you'll be able to share your screen um, with the person you're, you're in your conference with and they'll be able to share their screen with you also um, so you two can, can chat about resources or whatever you want. But that, your, uh, the account that you have logged into the meeting with won't matter. Like the status of that won't matter because we're using um, Mr. Stisa's account to host the, the conference meeting, the breakout room, if that makes sense. Will we be allowed and or required to record that interaction? Okay, good question. Um, and that's that's one of the ones that's covered in, in the FAQ uh, page. We will not be recording them and you will not be allowed to record them. Um, we would have to have a lot more permissions, basically, to allow recording. And we so as a team, we made the decision to not allow that. Uh, also, in the in-person Athenaeum, you can't record your sessions, so uh, feel free to take notes and, and um, uh, you know, write down info, but no recording, please. Oh, do we new, need more accounts to work from? No, no, but thank you. We're, we're covered on that front.
Do we have any other questions? I have a question. Is there, oh, anybody, have a question. Who's, yeah, is there anybody who's feeling super overwhelmed by this? <laughs> Karen is feeling overwhelmed. And that's totally okay. Sigga says beyond normal. <laughs> um, so I want to, I would love if we could to break that down a little bit. Like, what is overwhelming? Oh, interlibrary loan during COVID. I cannot help with that. It's my first Athenaeum. I'm back into the ANS. So is your um, dilemma what to put on your page? And then someone else says, I was at first finally getting the hang of it. I'm really glad. Yes, never tried to present my art form from digital media. Yeah. Yeah, an outline will definitely help. Oh, I feel insecure about my ability to convey my project, but also the back of mind fear getting less than helpful criticism or just really negative feedback. Okay, no one's gonna give you negative feedback. That is not, uh, that is not helpful. So the, um, there are two kinds of feedback that you could receive on your exhibit. There is a form where um, anyone, who even people who are not signed up, can leave a comment about your page. And those comments are going to be moderated. Every single one of them is going to be read by an administrator and approved or thrown in the trash like spam. Um, if a comment is spam, obviously, it will be trashed. If a comment is not constructively written, it will not be viewed. So you don't have to worry about that. Because that's not helpful to anybody. And that's not what this event is about. Can I, um, can I add something real quick? Yes. Um, so uh, I, I would say that you know uh, I've I've been um, uh, I've been a presenter. I'll turn on my video really quick because it's weird to be talking and not have video on. Um, so you can see me a little bit. So I've been a presenter and I've been um, I've been a a Laurel that that talks to people in one on ones for Athenaeum and both experiences have been really positive for me um, and that's the goal of the event is to you know to give people a place to talk about their amazing art and the things that they're excited about and so you know try to go into it thinking of it that way as opposed to you know thinking of it that you you might get negative feedback because the goal is not to give negative feedback the goal is to let people talk and be excited about things um, the other thing I would say is uh, somebody talked about, um, you know, transferring their art to a digital format. You know, this is the, they've never done that before. Yeah, I can absolutely relate to that. I've been doing online classes during, um, during COVID and it's been a challenge. It's definitely been a challenge a lot of times to find, um, to find the way to do that. But, um, you know, but it does work. It does work to a certain extent. You know, a great example is I, I made this giant wire weaving uh, display thing for my, for my class that I taught on Monday. You know, um, there will be a way. There will be a way to share it. And, you know, and, and no matter what, even if, you can't, um, even if you can't show exactly what you do, you can still talk to people about it. You know, and that's the cool thing about the one-on-one -on -one is that, you know, is that even if you can't perfectly explain or express it on a website, you can still, you can still talk to somebody about it and, and what, what the intent was um, behind your, your exhibit. So that's all. Back to you. <laughs> 
uh, uh, Bikonis Kyrie said that she wanted to speak to uh, Laurel Feedback, which is a great idea. Can you unmute Kyrie, please? Can I unmute her? Oh, there we go. No, <laughs> sorry about that. Apologies. Um, so I just to re again reassure you, as Disa, Mrs. Disa said, um, the Laurels are being coached, believe it or not, on how to give positive feedback, reminding them this is not a competition. This is not, um, you know, a critique. This is positive one-on-one -on -one commentary about your project to answer your questions like, did this present well? Is this how you do it? I'm stuck here. What do I do next? So that is, that is our goal with having this opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one about with Laurel about your project. Now there will be other people that are, um, anybody who signs up that participates that you accept their invitation to have one-on-one -on -one, will also have the opportunity to talk to you. Those interactions will maybe a little bit less um, uh, coached <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, but again, um, you will have the opportunity to, to accept um, the part other participants that want to meet with you. So if you see somebody that you're not sure about, um, you know, talk to the staff and we can, you know, maybe get a little bit more idea about what this person's goal, in, goal is for meeting with you. On a positive note, you know, if there's a, a somebody who is like an expert in this level that is, you know, not a Laurel, but someone you really want to talk to, please encourage them to sign up as a participant and work with and come and meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. This is a great opportunity to reach out to that expert who you've seen their work, but you've never actually had an opportunity to talk to them about. Anyway, I hope that helps reassure you that, again, this is all about a positive thing. It is, think of it more as a state fair um, exhibit type fun uh, learning activity than as any type of competition. Yeah, that, that's, those are really great points. Thank you to both of you. Um, I want to just add that the, um, uh, the people who are not Laurels who might sign up um, likely are just really interested in your project, <laughs> or maybe they have a mutual interest and they really want to talk to you about what you've learned, um, or they've always wanted to try the thing that you are, are talking about, um, or they want to ask you questions about how you've gotten this far, that kind of thing. Um, those are all possibilities. Um, and then the other thing that I thought of was that um, this is also, you know, I mentioned a couple of reasons or a couple of types of things that you might want to exhibit, but this is also a great opportunity to exhibit something that you're considering entering for a competition like Principality or Kingdom Arts and Sciences event. And you can ask for specific feedback on that exhibit, like did it, did it catch your eye? Did, was this enough? Was this, uh, was there any area that you would like more detail about if I were going to present this at a formal competition? Um, this is a great way to sort of get more comfortable talking about your topic and um, conveying your ideas and your, the way you went about your exhibit in, in a, a way that gives you constructive feedback before you get to the to the event that you want to enter in. So. Um, so I had a couple of questions that I grabbed here. Um, so anybody can visit the site uh, or with w whether they're signed up or not? That's correct, right? Yes. So anyone can view the site um, and anyone can view the exhibits once you indicate that they are ready for publishing and we go through them and we get your release forms and we, we publish them and everybody can see them. Um, the, uh, at the bottom of every exhibit page, there's a comment form and a conference form, a conference sign-up form. So the uh, general public, everybody can see the comment form. And when they leave a comment, before it gets published to your page, the administrators will see it and allow it to be published or not. Um, if people fill in, the only people who can see the conference form are people who have signed up to be participants ahead of time. So the general public, you know, like people we don't know can't just sign up to have a one-on-one -on -one conference with you. 
um, they have to register on the website just like you did. And the, the form is very similar. So um, we know that they are actually an SCA person <laughs> that, that, uh, um, that signed up. So. so everybody can visit it, but whether or not they can leave, leave feedback is, is depending on what they're, or anybody can leave feedback, but whether or not they can request a conference depends on if they've signed up or not. Um, okay. Anyone can visit the site rather signed up. Oh, yes. Mildly overwhelmed, short time frame to build the page. Yes, and I tried really hard to give you as much time as I could. But um, hopefully, once you get in there and start putting content in, it's, it'll, it'll build speed. <laughs> um, as an exhibitor, can we view the other exhibitors or do we need to sign up as a participant too? No. So as an exhibitor, you will be able to see all the exhibits just like the general public and you'll be able to leave comments just like the general public that will be moderated just like I said before. Um, but you will also automatically see the conference form. So as an exhibitor, if you are really interested in somebody else's project and you want to geek out with them about it, then please, please sign up to um, have a conference with them. Um, is there anything else that I can show you or cover for you to help you make your page or help you be successful here? Well, if you think of anything else, um, please leave your, uh, leave that in the visitor or in the, um, exhibitor feedback section and um, uh, yeah hopefully this is useful um, I'm going to do this again on Sunday evening same time six o'clock and it will probably go a little differently so if you want to tune in again you will probably pick up different things uh, or maybe even be able to answer some of people's questions <laughs> or if you between now and then if you log into your site and you come up with a different question I'm also happy to answer it then so yeah if, if you have questions as you begin building your pages, you can absolutely suggest topics for future Zoom meetings or even tutorials. Um, I'm kind of a night owl, so at 2 a.m. if you need me to record how to do something, I could totally do that and post it for you guys. So I'm happy to do that. And somebody said thank you for how much thought and planning you've put into all of this. And you're welcome. I'm excited to see this happen. I am, uh, I've been an exhibitor at Ethnium uh, both years that it's been in person and I already have my exhibit almost finished for this year, but I haven't done that yet. And uh, I, I wanted a way to keep the momentum going, even if it couldn't quite be the same. So uh, there's a whole team of us that, that got together and have made this happen, and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Can I add one thing really quick before we mm -hmm. end? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to say, uh, wait, yeah, no, I'm working. Okay. So I just wanted to say that um, that you know this. I know this is a short time frame, and I know that there's a lot to think about. Um, don't be afraid to. Um, to talk to the other exhibitors. There's a list on the website of, um, there's a list on the website of all of the exhibitors that are, um, that are displaying. And, you know, if you have a question or if you want to kind of get together and have a chat about it, don't be afraid to do that. You know, this is a, a way to build community, right? So, um, and, and a positive experience. So, you know, uh, don't be afraid to reach out and talk to other people, not just us, but other exhibitors too. Yeah, okay. Well, if we don't have any further questions, then we could end the tutorial.
But um, if anything, if you think of anything, definitely please use that feedback form and, and use it for everything. Um, I especially want to know when you are um, frustrated and angry and uh, <laughs> uh, want to throw something at me. Um, <laughs> I, I love to hear, uh, I love to hear the things that I can make easier for you. So um, yeah, reach out with questions, with feedback, positive or negative, and um, get in there and, and try to make your stuff. Oh, and you know what, if you, if you really, like something goes wrong, something happens, and you really need an extension on the 13th, I, I mean, just reach out, let me know. Keep me in the loop, and I will help you as much as I can. With that, I think uh, we could end, and uh, maybe I'll see some of you on Sunday or hear from some of you soon.